So today we've come back down to the steel plant to see how the reline is going on. And while we knew there was lots of engineering work going on rather than just the bricking, uh, when we turned up in a car park today, we didn't quite realise we'd be welcomed by this. So behind us you can see uh, one of the flare stacks, the flare stack uh, for converter one. Uh, and behind us immediately here is, uh, well it's difficult to describe, but we're going to find out. Joined by uh, Sean James, Sean is the uh, area engineer here. Uh, Sean, tell us what's going on here. So basically Tim, um, this is a flare stack tip for vessel one as you mentioned and um, it's basically how we ignite the gas that's uh, part of the process. Um, so basically when we blow oxygen into the vessel um, we produce CO gas and we either recover that gas or what we can't recover because it's too low quality or because we have no storage for it um, we burn off on the top of the stack. So. Um, the reason we're replacing this one is because in order to ignite the gas you require uh, six pilot burners at the top of the stack so you can see these on the side here and um, basically they're in very poor condition they, they've been in for about 10 years now and um, in dire need of replacement. And it's quite a complex system you know you said about the burners there but the process behind it about how you uh, regulate the gases and you've got uh, steam as I understand can also come out of it and then of course I'm not, I'm not being funny but it's, it's quite a long way up to get it isn't it? Yeah so it's about 70 meters high um, you mentioned the steam so that that comes as part of the process so we have you know the dust collecting water in the, in the off gas system which is quite a hot system as you can imagine with the, the steel process and um, basically when we're not producing steel uh, you get a lot of you know evaporated water coming up through the stack so that's when you see the steam uh, and then when we are processing steel uh, we generate the carbon monoxide gas which is combustible over 120,000 ppm um, and that's when you see the big orange flame coming out of the stack. And it's one thing to uh, to sort of understand what goes on on there and work out when it needs replacing and, and, and project manage it, it's quite another thing to get the old one down and the new one up and I'm delighted we're joined by Greg Isaac from uh, John Zinc who are the main contractors on site. Greg it's your job to to work out how to get it up there and 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 no less important men to go with it. Yeah I mean obviously safety is key and um, there was a massive amount of planning involved. Um, I think the first day we had the um, Tata safety crew team down here and they said the JMS was probably one of the most thorough and best JMS's they'd ever seen. Um, yeah, it's a complicated lift, um, made more complicated by having to use breathing apparatus. Um, the adjacent flare, there was a risk of um, carbon monoxide um, affecting the workers up there. So both we've used two types of breathing apparatus, both scuba self-contained sets and also continuous air supply up there. So um, we can um, have four guys working at the top, 70 metres up, with a continuous air supply, with gas detectors, knowing they're safe. Um, the tip itself is about 10,000 kg. Um, 70 meter lift. We had two cranes here, so we had access via man riding basket for personnel, but also um, we had um, a rescue plan in place to bring people down should we need to. And that we had three or four different ways of bringing people down, including abseiling from ropes, um, using the cradle, um, using the second mobile crane to bring people down. So um, planning was key. I'm happy to say it all went really well, um, and um, the, the new tip went on really smoothly. Yeah, because it's quite a precise operation, isn't it? And it's a long way up in the air. It reminds me a bit of the down camera on the blast furnace, you know. And I understand this thing is uh, held on by, well, I've got one here, a number of bolts. Yeah. But um, although it's a big bit of kit, that's very precise to get a crane in place. How yeah. long do the guys stay up there at a time? Um, on the self-contained sets, they've only got 45 minutes of air. But once we move over to the continuous, they can stay up there for longer. But we lifted the tip 9.35, the new tip 9.35 this morning. Um, and it went on just like a dream really um, and um, there was a lot of tie-ins up there of service pipe work as well and every, all, the, all the connections have been made um, and um, that was a, a big relief and I think both Sean and I were really pleased to see that happen. Um, 70 metres, we've done flares up to 205 metres so this was well within the height parameters but the breathing apparatus, you know, the rope access, the weight of the tip all made it a complicated project but happy to say it's all gone really well. Yeah, it's a fantastic piece of work and seeing the breathing air support unit on site to, to refill the bottles and something, everything's been really, really well planned. Sean, I just want to come back to you because, uh, you know, the old one has come down, the new one's gone up, but uh, that's not the end of the story. 
for the steel plant primary steel making, is it? No, so um, hopefully now um, the one we've got down is in remarkably good condition, apart from the pilot burners. Uh, so there's a bit of refractory work to do on the inside of it and the, uh, the wind strikes need replacing because of fatigue. But uh, other than that, we're hoping um, if we can get that refurbished in time to change it on the next reline for Vessel 2. Fantastic. Listen, thanks both very much Ray, for all the work you've been doing, but thanks for taking time out to talk to us today. So there we are. But yeah, relining a steel vessel is not just about the bricking, it's all around the engineering, taking the opportunity when the vessel is down to do other work. And uh, wherever you go in this place, something extraordinary is happening. We're going inside now and we're going to find out what's happening on the vessel. Guys, thanks very much.